Het is goed. En het is mooi om een company investeren in art, en vooral minority art in rather than sports. That's rare. I, I didn't even know well, that it see, happened at all. Well, Luciano, he's a cozy, hippie-ish kind of blender. That's can you show the, the book again? And, and yeah. what company is that? And what is, the book, and what is the book exactly? It's a uh, book on, 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 on 200, and, 200 and something contemporary uh, American Indian artists. Did this uh, company, like, collect them? Do they own? No, they collect it. Yeah. It's all the same size. It has to be, like, they're small, small works about this size. And then he makes walls, right. and he puts all the work in, in Edgar Heap of Birds. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of people that have contributed to work to it, you know, and they're all in this book. Those know. are and vital. He, travels, he, he it was in the B, in the Venice Biennale for two months, you know, people could view it there, you know. It's the, the, the two yearly big uh, arts, it's the biggest arts in the world, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's the most and important. And it was in there, yeah. uh, and of course Luciano can do what he likes because he's got plenty of money, so they just went to place and put that up. Well, I'm pressed During because the, Biennale. the artists represented that you mentioned are political artists and contemporary, which is yeah, and not something the, the uh, American Indian community embraces. They're, they're well, a problem with political There's a lot of people, that, even my friend Niles in this book, he, he's got a picture in there. You know, so that's very impressive, <laughs> I think. I don't know that. When did that book come out? Oh, a couple of months ago. Maybe six months ago. So there is hope for young artists in the uh, American He helped them, you know. I mean, we were approached, uh, we had a page on Facebook. We were approached by a representative of the Benetton Company through Facebook. And and what? She found his, no, she found the Indigenous Brilliant site and said, can you help me find some good native artists? You know, so, and Lars said yes. And so they met up. Uh, you know, had long conversations. I mean, he got a lot of the artists to to inspire them to to make a, a piece for her and, and really? send it in. You know, and uh, it got published. It got published. Well, I mean, I mean, the nice thing about this book is that almost every artist that in it's in in Indigenous Brilliance mentions Indigenous Brilliance. So we mentioned here. You mentioned at least a dozen times wow. Indigenous Brilliance is mentioned in this book in Italian and in. in uh, in, in English, and I'm delighted oh. because it's you know I mean it gives us gives us so much credibility this book. That's I've sent great. it to the Museum yeah. of Scotland. You know I'm going to send it to the Museum of Scotland. Said look we're in this book and it's this you know Americans in it. You know I mean John de Sells. You know there's a lot of of, of the um, I think eleven of the uh, Indigenous billions artists. Edgar there he is. You know they've got that oh. up. You know which is really cool. That's uh, up on that, up on that wall. The camera. Smile for racist. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, is the typical Edgar, Edgar is one of the artists in Indigenous Brilliance who's also going to be in Scotland and will probably attend in person. Oh, wow, that's great. Oh, I yeah. get to meet him. He came to Spain. That's great. He got, uh, he got a ticket to go to England, which was uh, sponsored by the university to do lectures, and then he got his tribe, China Rappos, he got his tribe to, to sponsor the ticket and the hotel from, from England to Spain, which wasn't very much money. So he managed to come to Spain, did a lecture in, mm. in, uh, in the exhibition space there, which was packed with Spanish people who all spoke, who all spoke English so and who all asked very intelligent questions. He was very impressed because they were listening you were asking him, you know, real political questions, you know, he couldn't believe well, it. What you're saying is, here this whole, the, these political artists, you know, yeah, they're, they're American Indians, but how does, how do you see that, like, uh, in Europe, are there very many political artists that, this is encouraging for artists that have work that's political anyway, well, so I it's think very they encouraging. Should, I, th I think they should uh, be in Europe more than they are. You know, I mean, like 18, most Indians that I talk to have to go, if they want to come over, they have to go and get a passport. I couldn't imagine not having a passport. I've always, all my life I've had a passport, so I can travel. And I can't understand people that don't have passports. I well, really that, can't. That helps me, but like, as a political artist, I don't see much anywhere, whether it's Europe no. or America, that, no. that really inspires me. So no. it's like, I feel like I have to it's do that. So I have yeah. to travel it's to suppressed. meet people. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's suppressed here and it's suppressed, it's in, suppressed in the United anywhere. States. Yeah, because it political represents change. And well, political art is not just, it's not about painting political it's bad leaders. For, it's bad for American business. That's why they suppress it. That's what John always said. He says, we're bad for American business. John Trudell said that? Yeah, Indians are bad for American business. <laughs>
you know, because it gives them a bad, uh, you know, the genocide, uh, you know, the, the murder of millions and millions and millions of Indians for fun is something they like to, which they have swept under the carpet very successfully, and nobody talks about it. There's no monuments, there's no Holocaust monuments for Indians anywhere. Yeah, American there Holocaust. Isn't, there isn't one. It's not in history books, you know, it's just sort of glossed over. And then they go on, and, then they, and then they go, yeah, the land of the free. I don't think so. I don't think it's the land of the free at all. I think it's a, a big uh, lie. Well, free, American lie. you have to well, say you're free. That's like t saying you trust me, trust me. I'm well, like, but Roger, nah. my, friend, Roger, <laughs> my, my friend Roger always said uh, the, the Americans built on the, the red man's blood and the black man's muscle, and he's totally correct. It was built on, on, on murdering the original population and then getting slaves to, to work on the land. Oh yeah, and then you had the Chinese slaves making the railroad too, oh. so you know, like exploitation. Mm. But they're, they're, yeah. they're colonial Europeans. There's no such thing as an American. They're colonial so, Americans, if you hear this, you're colonial Europeans. You don't belong there. Go back to where you belong. You know, don't tell, and don't tell Mexicans like Trump that they can't come into the States. You don't belong there either. We're how dare they? You know, we're, how at dare a, they? we're at a time where the colonial mindset is like the corporate mindset now, globally, and taking yeah. resources like water and food. Oh, well, they always it's, have. It's that's the, uh, you know, the extension mm -hmm. of manifest destiny. I mean, look at uh, look at Saboba, for instance. You know, they they, they redirected the river. They used to, grow, used to grow peaches there, and the river's gone. So they redirected it. So where is this all going to lead? Um, Where do you how do you see the future for for? We'll blow creative. ourselves up. You think that's gonna happen? Yeah, the Earth will survive, but we won't. As a species, you know, we we're very busy killing ourselves. Why do you think the the human impulse is more towards destruction than creation? Don't have no idea. Like people I certainly even haven't. I don't understand it. I don't yeah. have that, and I can't understand why anybody else would think that. I have no idea. It's a shortcut. It's too, is it too hard, too much responsibility to be creative, that people just it. want to be destructive or be passive and in passively entertained with war and entertainment and not create uh, new I, possibilities? I, I, I don't understand it. Does it. Well, also, it's not economically viable. Artists take chances and new ideas. So they but, but it's economically. It, what does that mean, anyways? Nothing. It's good for the big corporations, the multinationals. Yeah, well, I don't like big. I don't care if it's good for the big corporations. I don't <laughs> like big corporations. I fuck economics. You know what I mean? What are they? It's boring. That's what you used to say. Yeah, boring. It's, it's, <laughs> Remember? It doesn't. Like, you know. I mean, people. Uh, almost everybody I know thinks within the framework of what society tells us we should believe. Well, I do it as as a warrior to identify the I problem. I just ignore it. I, I can't. I'm, I just ignore it. How do you ignore it? I'll What's your advice to people? Well, do something yourself. Which exactly, is that's doing. exactly. Same here. Promote real people that write real things that are good and angry. Be authentic. You know, promote, promote Indians that are independent, you know, and I'm so delighted that, it, that it's a woman, you know. Again, yeah, it's, it's, and I was a woman. I did the first, the, first, uh, the first European one, and she's a woman. She's doing the first Indian one, you know, uh, and, uh, and so I think and it's a fresh to, point of view. Listen to the women more. Don't see them as objects all the time. You know, that really exactly. pisses me off. Still, I know. You know, yeah. I mean, they're not objects. Well, that don't do that. That and, and treating American Indian artists as objects too. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're if you're a woman and you're ugly, you're really out of luck. It's true. It's chance. getting it's getting worse. It's a lot worse yeah. now than it, it was is. like twenty yeah, years ago. Oh yes, there's all the it's appalling. And, yeah, it's I know. Gross. I know. Actually. You know, I mean, and, and, and it's something. Else. I mean, it's not just about Indians. It's about anybody, any any group of people that is suppressed or, or you know, not but, taken serious. But that's or, the mo. That's the uh, hierarchy. That's I can't the, even the, watch these m movies. I, I even get annoyed now if I see these women are walking around in short skirts and high heels. Even that I can't cope with anymore. I go, why do they do that? Why? Why is that? Why do they make this difference? Why are they half naked while the men well, are fully dressed? You were talking about this yesterday. It's as if like a guy, if guys walked around, and they had their balls it's hanging out of their they pants. Don't. Well, they never right? do. So there is, <laughs> see, there is a, a inequality there already. They're not seen as objects, and women still are all the time. Well, it it keeps business as usual, going back to the corporations. Yeah, nothing is nothing has changed. Government. Yeah, but nothing it's like changed. any advice on how things can change. I mean, certainly women well, can take a different It's right in your nose, just be, your, be yourself and don't pay any attention to what society tries to tell you. That's the best advice. Yeah. Most people know. Well, that's, 
that's they're lazy. Especially if you're an artist. They're lazy. An artist is supposed to like have their view the, and their work, so it's like why cow to like whatever control. They're mentally, grit. they're just lazy. They, yeah. they could be doing this, but they're not. Well, it's like uh, to quote William S. Burroughs, sabotage all systems of control, including systems that control Most people, how you how well, you use your body and your art and how you present yourself. Most people are consumers, not producers. They consume things, they don't produce anything. They could, but they don't. This is, it's appalling to me because you're on this earth for a short time and don't you, especially like if you're conscious, you want to add to the history of human evolution. No. You want to go forward and not back, you know what I mean? Well, they're Stop not going forward. They're not for going forward at all, are they? No. I don't think so. Uh -uh. Yeah. Well, you see, even technology is used to enslave minds and perception. It, it's like technology, yeah, technology is always inherently good. Right? Yeah, if it's and, used to that. Big right, business is uh, inherently right. good, yeah, and you're not supposed to criticize these things. And it's, but this is quite good. This 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 Indian looks all pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, can you show the, the people out there? Look at that. Indian, uh, Indian in a concentration camp, <laughs> right? Is he concentrating? Yeah, well, he's well, isn't that what the reservation system is? No, well, it's a concentration camp. That's where they got the idea of, oh, the Alex is in there. See, I didn't need even give him a little bit of paper. See, there that's, he is. Well, that's true that uh, Hitler used to write the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Mm -hmm. That's where he got his statistics and numbers on for concentration camp. Can you show Jacob's page? Oh, yeah, yeah. Alex, yeah, he's a, uh, uh, he's a diehard activist and uh, published a magazine called Akrasasna Notes for a long time, which was a political, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, I that. political yep. newspaper, and that he was the editor. That's so right, he's and he's a journalist an now. He's, he's a journalist, journalist too. He's a journalist, yeah. he's an artist, he's political. a poet, he's a musician. Critical. He's, a, he's a social critic. Very, yeah, very much so. I mean, yeah, he's a contemporary artist. You know, he's an important man, I think. No, he's kind of did his own thing. He's never really towed the line no, or what. He hasn't. Any, no, no, he does. Any, he does his own the tra stuff. culture traps. It's uh, very liberating that he's still productive. Yeah. You know, so there, so there is hope, but it's like you know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. But it's up to artists and individuals, thinkers, to present new options. Exactly. And and like you said, just be yourself and uh, do. Create what you want to see in the world instead of copying everybody and all these like slave masters left and right. Well, I'm glad Ridiculous. to see. I'm glad to see these radical artists like uh, 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 Alex and Edgar <coughs> in this book, in this Italian work. <laughs> yeah, and I'm delighted book. because they're Italians. They're not Americans. They're not British. They're Italians who have impeccable taste, who really care about art. Always have. They've got a history. very strong yeah, history of art. If, I mean, I noticed that when we did an exhibition in, in Italy, how engaged people were, how, how, how passionate, how, how enthusiastic, you know what I mean? When you go here, go to Holland, mm. you know, I mean, I interested. That. A lot mm. of Europe, people oh, it's aren't foreign. excited. Oh, Same as the Brits, but the world foreign. But the Italians and the Spanish, really? the two best exhibitions, well, the, poorest, the two press. poorest countries are the ones that spent the most money on the art. That's right, the, That's there was a I French thought. paper that wrote about my sex goblins exactly. for the Indigenous Brilliant Show. Yeah. They didn't go like, oh, that's too weird or graphic or it's like contemporary art. Plus, and thank you, Meditin, plus they sent me a free copy, although I haven't contributed anything apart from the artist and, and the name. But, you know, I mean, they, they sent a free copy to all the artists as well, which wow. I think is wonderful. And they sent me one, so that's great. This came, this came straight from Jennifer, who was the coordinator. She's, she's married to an Italian, she's Canadian herself. Mm. She's the one that travels all around Canada and the States collecting all this work for Luciano, who doesn't, he's 80, you know, he's, an, he's quite elderly. You know. Oh, so is, is Ben and Ted going to promote the show in Edinburgh? No, in no. no. They're doing their own thing now, they're probably going to go, they go all over the world with that work now. No, but the Indigenous Brilliance is, in the, is mentioned in the book about 12 times and it's great. sufficient. That's great. I talked to you. Uh, any money or anything like that. You don't, you, you don't get that. You'll get facilities, you'll get publicity. People don't give money. But why not? They just don't. I don't know why not. They don't. They do not spawn. They don't, they don't give you exposure. It's, you know, because it's not part of the system. Because it's not part of the system. I mean, yeah. we, are, we are a renegade organization and I think we, we've, we've gone very far considering yes, we are a renegade organization by getting these kind of 
it is this kind of exposure by That's being great. taken serious by the British Museum, the National Museum of Scotland. I think we've done very well. And we we started it in Albuquerque with Renegade Artists Presents. No, we started with that fundraiser. And Xeroxing. Xerox zine. Xerox zine and, the and, and the fundraiser, which was a good exercise for these exhibitions, because it's basically, actually, that was more work because of performance and you know what I mean. These, yeah. this, these are just exhibitions. That was ex an exhibition plus a performance evening, which was a lot of work. I was so tired. Yeah, uh, yeah, at the end put of so it. much energy into that. And I put a lot of energy into that, yeah, and it worked, and didn't it? Yeah, it and like worked. I said, people still talk about the fundraiser in 1997. Exactly. Yeah, you know, and it, it led eventually led to these indigenous brilliant shows. That's for sure. So well, we have a break. Well, yes. Uh, thank I you. Elliot Vandenberg. Yes. We can have to talk some more. Mm -hmm.